welcome back to the third segment and final segment of the Glazoff Gang. Our gang members this evening, Alsonia Schmidt, conservative political pundit, Evan Sayet, leading conservative comedian in the United States, and one of the top 25 influential conservative Jews in America. Perfect. Did I get that Perfect. right? And Austin Dragon, known as a prominent intellectual, as well as a shrewd political analyst. But not a Jew. <laughs> so let's, be, just in case people do not get the context, very quickly again explain that you were chosen. There's a, there's a, a, a popular website, uh, John Hawkins, uh, who also has his articles reprinted in uh, Town Hall and elsewhere, yeah. who made a list, admittedly somewhat arbitrary, as, as it has to be, of the top... 20 most influential Jews in conservative politics. <laughs> okay. All right? I, I didn't make the top 20. Those were people like Prager and, and Charles Krauthammer. Yeah. But he then adds a handful of honorable mentions. And I was one of the... Uh, me. Al me. Sonia, somebody that knows Evan, in what ways <laughs> is he an influential conservative? I have no what idea. What does he influence? <laughs> what does he influence exactly? No, but in your best, the best guess. Oh, well, he's a, he's a wonderful thinker. He's yeah. given a lot of thought to... Liberalism, or I just go there crazy. I take two. You with, have, take two with sincerity. Do you consider him intelligent? Intelligent? Yes. <laughs> yes. Rank him as a comedian. Brilliant. Rank him as a comedian. I think he gets ten across the board. Okay, Austin. Before, <laughs> Austin, before we continue, in terms of Evan being in the top twenty-five conservative Jews in America, what what comes to mind when you when you hear well that? Well deserved. Well deserved. See, see how that's done. You know, people really, really see love. How that's, you see people, why he has friends. Yeah. People really, really, really love oh. Evan Sid. You said they, we want to be honest. Like, <laughs> no, we didn't. Oh, okay. Has Evan ever offended either of you ever? No. How long's the show? <laughs> okay. Let us begin with this third segment, which I will call Muslim Brotherhood Rising. So it's a comedy segment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lots, uh, lots, of, lots of. But fun. very worrisome. It looks like, thanks to Obama and also all the scary events happening with the Arab Spring, the election in Egypt, it appears that the Muslim Brotherhood uh, is going to take power there. Uh, look, this Arab Spring was supposed to bring democracy and freedom and, and all this stuff, but if the majority of people want Sharia law, it's problematic. Al Sonia, are we losing the Middle East to the Muslim Brotherhood? I believe so, and I believe that that was a huge question in the beginning. And interestingly enough, nobody in this administration or in the media wanted to look at that. They were so excited about their quote unquote you know, democracy that was taking place that nobody seemed to be What do you think about Obama about pushing Mubarak out and, and what what did we even have to gain in Libya well, by taking Gaddafi? I think he what? also, even more interesting, I, I think I read recently that uh, they had some young dissidents come over and train them in the way of, of uh, political activism. You know, and so I don't think that, I think the Americans, uh, this administration had their hands in that movement and that... Um, and I, I find that a little disturbing. So. Austin, we have a president that doesn't support the Iranian students when they're out in the streets several years ago to overthrow real tyrants. We have a president that's throwing Mubarak out in Egypt with the Muslim Brotherhood coming in. He gets rid of Gaddafi, but now we don't know where the chemical weapons and where the surface-to-air missiles have gone. They might have ended up in Gaza. Is and this a complete catastrophe? Well, I think it is. It just shows a, a president who, in, in my view, is just out of their depth. I mean, they just really don't know what It's not out of their depth. <laughs> I, 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 I do. I, I, okay, I we've got this. I, he I, thinks he's out of his depth. I, I you do. think it's deliberate. I don't mm -hmm. think it's deliberate because, I mean, one of the things that whenever you're doing any of these kind of, when you're deciding what is the action, what would we do? I mean, if the majority of the Egyptian people say, you know what, we don't care what you, the West, want, we want the Muslim Brotherhood. But wait okay, a minute. Carter exactly pulled the rug time. from under the feet of the Shah. Absolutely. That was deliberate. Absolutely. Uh, that was a leftist. Absolutely. And that destroyed Iran. Absolutely. And and Obama, in many ways, is pulling the, the rug from... He already pulled the rug from under the feet of Mubarak. But because, conversely, okay. conversely... Why did he have the Muslim Brotherhood sitting there when he came to give that big speech? Now, that was not just stumbling in the dark. I mean, right, and conversely... He, 
what he should have done with the Iranian democracy movement, a real which democracy really movement, democracy. is said what Ronald Reagan would right. have said, which is that we support you, we exactly. support you 100%. Not only did he not do that, he said, I really don't care, I'm going to do business with whoever wins, mm -hmm. which was a, a, a wink wink and a nudge nudge to the Ayatollahs and to Ahmadinejad to crack down because he said, no matter what, we're going to be in bed with you. And what would it have taken? Okay, I understand with the Egyptians, but why did he have to speak up so quickly and support the overthrow of the man who had maintained the peace in the Middle East for 30 years? You know, you look, and, and there are too many places where he sides with evil and against the good across the board for it to be merely accident. Well, let's talk about good and evil, though. I am worried for Israel because, in turn, I mean, Obama's been bullying Israel, but with what's happening in Egypt and the Muslim Brotherhood taking over in that whole area, I mean, is, is Al Sonia, is Israel alone in terms of not having the great allies supporting them? I anymore? think absolutely this administration has shown them over and over without, you know, in question that they're alone. I, uh, we were talking about the hostages that were released from um, Iran. It was it Iran back to, to Israel? To yeah, from, from, uh, the, from Hamas. From, from Hamas, the, after right. Kidnapping. And, Ed, and, Evans, yeah. and Evans said he, he felt like that was a move that they did because there's going to be a war soon. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I, I felt that they, they wanted the kid back before war because before you know the horrible yeah. things that, that the Muslims would do to a, to a, to a Jew in, in their captivity. And and they, something, yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, and, and the, 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 uh, the Israelis, they have no choice but to defend themselves. And I think with this administration, we are not going to back them up. But listen, That's another reason I think does it's there have important. to be very quick action soon in terms of Iran and the bomb? If America's not going to do it, Israel might do it. How, Austin, how do you see this playing out? Is Israel going to have to act soon? Because yeah, once the Iranians to, get yeah. this bomb, if they don't already have it, I mean, we're in big trouble. They well, believe in this 12th Imam. I mean, we've been talking about, this, been talking about this event coming for a long time. And, mm -hmm. and the president um, promised us he would Israel, never allow can it. Can Israel do it effectively? What would happen in that scenario? Um, I don't think really we have the information to really answer that mm -hmm. information. I mean, that question. I think they on the ground, the Israelis do know whether they can do it effectively. But regardless of what they do, we're going to see the whole area erupt. I mean, the, and, it's, and, it's, and, and, why is Barack Obama bullying Netanyahu and the Israelis about building apartments, and he's not even bullying Iran about building apartments? Because he hates church. You're saying that Barack Obama hates Jews? He hates Western civilization. Judeo-Christian is what makes up the civilization. Get on board. He's on board. Just okay. okay. right. a second. Is he, Barack Obama an anti-Semite? Uh, does he? Would he hate me because I, I I've got a big nose? No. Would he? Would he hate Israel because they're successful? Well, you have to understand about how the liberal thinks is. Anything that succeeds must be unjust. If 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 you're a multiculturalist. If every culture is equally good and equally right, then how do you explain this dot of sand in the Middle East that has symphony orchestras, that has Nobel Prize winning physicists, that has a first rate economy, and over here you have the Palestinians who are mired in crap? To you and me, we go, well, it's a different culture. If they'd stop covering their women from head to toe and beating them if their ankles become exposed, if they'd stop putting bombs on their children and tell them to go kill the infidel. But to the liberal who's not allowed to recognize any culture is any better than any other, then Israel's success is proof that they're cheaters, and the Palestinians' failure is all the proof they need that they've been oppressed. Let's just say Obama didn't hear all of the sermons at Reverend Wright's <laughs> church. No, I would say he did hear all the sermons. He absolutely yeah. did, but let's just yeah. say... You know, which also showed me that this man will comfortably lie to the American people. There is no way you can sit in a church for 20 years. How, and by the not way, did he get away Very. with that? That's what I was wondering. Like, if you're in a church for 20 years and you say you don't remember anything your pastor said, how did he get away well, we with that? Because the media. liberal media has one standard. Right. If it's good for the liberals, they they do it. If it's bad for the liberals, they don't do it. That's the entire standard. Nothing else. Let's and go on. Austin, I see you shaking your, uh, <laughs> nodding your head quite a bit. Has Evan and uh, have Evan? and Al Sonia won you over in terms of Obama's... Well, I, it wasn't a matter of winning over. It's just I have a slightly different take mm -hmm. on it. I, 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 I think the end result is the same for all three of us and all of us in this room. Mm -hmm. The end result is, is destruction. Um, we are on the wrong path. That's why we need to get this person out of there. Okay, so, let us suppose that something good happens and Obama doesn't win in 2012. 
if it was Gingrich or Romney and you got a phone call yeah, and were asked your opinion and advice on what foreign policy should now be coming up with Israel and the Middle East, what would you advise, Austin? Well, I mean, it's between now, I mean, we have a, a, a year to go. I mean, what is going to be happening in that year? It's kind of mm -hmm. hard for me to, to talk about what we should do at that time. Um, a toughening so, against Iran on Israel's side? Absolutely, absolutely. We definitely have to really uh, reestablish that relationship or what, what little there is of it. Talk, And we have to also um, look at you know, what can we can do in Iran in terms of the people that many of whom are uh, pro-Western. Uh, we definitely have to show Israel that we are their solid friend and no one will get between now, us. Now, Austin, how about Europe collapsing with the Euro and everything and should America be coming in there and bailing them? I mean, what's going to happen? I, I disagree with that, but, you know, unfortunately, America, based on our own financial situation, we're really, you know, we're not really in a moral position to tell Western Europe anything. Austin, we, why did Europe self-destruct and give its civilization away? Well, because it has uh, that kind of secular liberal mindset where, you know, they have this massive, okay, I lived in Europe for a year, and it has this massive welfare state. Everyone's going to be taken care of from cradle to grave. Um, there is no money to do it. It's a failed uh, policy. It has always failed, yet they're going to do it again, and this is the end result. They're going to collapse. Al Sonia? I mean, he covered a lot of territory. Yeah, he covered so. a lot. But one of the things that I, I think uh, I would like to emphasize is if we cannot get our economy in order, we can't help anybody. Right. Uh, and we're and we're feckless. You know, no matter what our president says, if we can't back that up militarily or by imposing sanctions or whatever, we, uh, being able to um, produce our own uh, oil and our own energy. That's a good start. We can't do anything. Yeah. So I think that our economy is... How do important. we get off Saudi oil? And I mean, drill! We drill, baby, drill. <laughs> why why doesn't Obama, why, why does no. Obama believe in drill, baby? Because he hates <laughs> America! <laughs> and, <laughs> he doesn't want us to be rich. Again, <laughs> period. Not Republicans haven't done and it either. We, 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 we well, didn't stop not. the drilling in the Gulf. Um, no, we didn't drill enough because, you know what, we weren't in this situation four years ago, eight years ago, 12 years ago. We do. Yeah, we should have done more. We Absolutely. need a president that's going to stand up against environmentalists. Okay, listen. Environmentalists I want to answer your question, though, okay, go ahead. if I may, how Europe self-destructed. The National Socialists killed all the Jews of Europe. All right, The international socialists, i.e. the liberals, the modern liberals, converted all the Christians to secularism so that they were narcissistic and didn't have children and sat around going, free stuff for me, free stuff for me. Well, in that kind of pyramid scheme, which is what all socialist policies are, the next generation has to be larger than the one before. Where are those people going to come from? The Jews are dead. The Christians aren't multiplying. They imported all the Muslims. So now there are no Christians, practicing Christians. There are no Jews. They're dead. And the whole continent's Muslim. The crux of some of the debate at this table this evening, in terms of this importation of Muslims, <coughs> was it a deliberate strategy of the left to destroy this country? I, and, or, or let's say Western Europe. I, I the way that that demographic threat now exists, was were those the multiculturalists that said, let's bring in these many you know Muslims what? If, and if, Sharia law. If Western just, civilization wasn't so evil, Islam would have spread originally. Remember those horrible crusades? What a wonderful way to get social justice then by returning things to their natural order as they would have been if it wasn't for those evil Westerners, and that includes Muslims populating all of Europe. You know, is it intentional destruction? Uh, I don't know. I know I lived in Europe for a brief, uh, for about a year or so myself, and there were a lot of Muslim workers. But when you're not having children, mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah. you need workers. You need somebody to bring in that income so you can continue to go on those well, holidays. Well, okay, it's I'm going to exactly. ask. Exactly. We, we have uh, only a about one or two minutes left. Two very quick questions from each of you. One, what are you the? What are each of you very, very concerned about looking into the future? Austin, we've already mentioned it. Um, Iran gets the bomb. Israel has to act either at the time or before. This is on and, the forefront of your mind and, and concerns. The Middle East going up um, in flames um, and then affecting everything. Um, is Obama? to blame to a certain extent, to a certain large extent, of paving the road to this terrible situation in the Middle East? I, I, I believe that he is uh, uh, 
uh, takes a significant blame. But this is, again, this has been going on. Mm -hmm. We've known Iran has been moving towards mm -hmm. this for a while, and we haven't, there hasn't been an effective policy. Now, Sonia, something that's been on your mind that's concerning you? I am concerned that... Uh, Aside from Evan's behavior. <laughs> <laughs> I'm concerned that somehow Obama doesn't run, and Hillary hmm? runs. I'm just saying. Oh, wow. I'm way up there, but I'm wondering if Obama doesn't run, they find some way to, you know, there have been many articles written about him recently, let's say, just do he us all a favor. A and So if Hillary runs, I've had the feeling that she... Why would he agree to this? I, I don't... I think the legend. I think. Don't the, make him the, an offer he can't refuse. You think, I think the that job o goes you're afraid on. that Obama might agree not to run and that Hillary, Hillary does, and nobody sees that Hillary really has the same agenda because she's much more subtle. So I think it gets done one way or another. Austin, is this something Wait, that I, you're I, worried about? No. Okay. And my other concern domestically that might happen more, more, um, and, and, and more, it'll happen soon is that. I have a feeling that we are looking at uh, possible race riots in this country in a way. I think this this place is going to blow. It's just, it's it's pulled tight as a drum. Ray, what races are going to be at what races? I think that Obama and uh, this administration and liberalism in general with multiculturalism, with social justice, with class warfare has pitted Americans against Americans. Mm -hmm. I think that Amer it does not help that Obama has been the commander and thief for the past three years, I think people are angry. They're afraid. They're they're hungry. There's just so many things going on that I think this blows, and I do think it's black and white. Evan, say it on that. My biggest, Optimistic my biggest, note. my biggest, <laughs> my biggest concern at the moment is that the question. Yes, sir. I, I, not personal. I think it, not yeah, it's probably it's, it, if, if brown matches gray, that would be my <laughs> my biggest concern at the moment. But, but outside of myself, you know what? It's it. The whole world is so crazy right now um you know gee europe collapsing uh the middle east in flames america in race riots america going bankrupt the schools it's what my biggest fear is that obama gets reelected because that's the, the the head that's the but it's only part of it it's been 60 years of wrongful thinking called liberalism that has found its way, yes, into the Republican Party as well. When when George Bush says compassionate conservative, conservatism is compassionate. Okay, here's the rule. 30 seconds each, we have to say goodbye. But the gang members at the end of the uh, Glazov gang show either tell something uh -oh. that they're planning in their own short-term future or tell a funny joke. Austin? Uh -oh. oh, boy. You got um, any short-term plans? Um, just working on a novel, political thriller. And a, a political thriller, wow. fantastic. Is it? Is can you give us a little bit more of a hint? Uh, religious overtones. It also has to do with uh, geopolitics as and well. And you're still preparing to do the marathon? Yes, I am. Okay, Al Sonia. Well, I'm going to try to figure out why Austin Dragon's name sounds like he belongs in the Klan. And no, that's wow. very inappropriate. It's a city oh. and, a, and a title. Okay, so your name existed long before English. So got it. Okay. No, no, no. Well, okay. Are that? I know. I've got a two-woman play called Ladies of the Right okay. that I am doing. We're touring across the country, and please check our website. Funny, good, terrific, wonderful. Go see it. Ladiesoftheright.com. I, and I, I, I auditioned it. for yes, it. I wrote you're it, acting produced it? it, and I'm writing it. There's only Fantastic. two women. I play Al Sharpton, Maxine Waters, Sheila Jackson Lee. Fantastic. Does Evan players. have anything to do with this? So no. you were typecast. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> actually and, Evan helped out. Oh, Evan helped mm -hmm. out? <laughs> see how he's very a very influential I, that's conservative. Right, yes. Now and I the, see The him. last word goes to one of the top 25 conservative, <laughs> uh, in, most influential conservative Jews in America, Evan Sayers. I, I am working on my book. I'm working on an e-book version of the book where I tell how Hollywood really works and why it is that they, they make movies in this town, they make TV shows in this town that fly in the face of American values and they do it over and over and over again, even when their movies bomb at the box office. Nine movies, I believe, nine about the Iraq war, nine anti-American, nine bombed at the box office. <laughs> Austin Dragon, Al Sonia Schmidt, and Evan Sayet, thank you for joining the Glass Off Gang. We'll see you again soon. Good night.